speaker is Joe Mondano, and um, he is radiation and public health from the Radiation and Public Health Project. We'll be speaking about the post Fukushima increases in newborn hypothyroidism on the west coast of the United States. So bringing it home. Again and again, the public begins to believe this. Okay, even the 
before any study is done. In fact, I'll, I'll, you can say there was there's one comment by a gentleman like Dr. John Boise from Vanderbilt University. He said, not only that are the doses are, are so, so low, there's no way any epidemiological study can detect any increase in any disease from, from Fukushima. So in other words, put your pencils away, everybody. Don't, don't do any studies. Um, it is up to us in the more objective uh, areas of, of the research community to stand up to this. We need to, first of all, conduct studies immediately, as soon as we can. We need to use whatever data we have, even though it's going to take decades and decades to really find out what the full uh, meaning of the machine was. We have, to, we have to start now. And most importantly, we have to get this information out into the public so that they understand we're not dealing with a small thing here, we're dealing with an extremely serious situation. Um, the article is actually our second article uh, on the health effects. co author with uh, my colleague, Dr. Janet Sherman, Terms of toxicologist. Uh, we picked the topic newborn hypothyroidism. For those that don't you know, no, hypothyroidism is a condition where the um, level of thyroid hormone is very low and the gland is underactive. This occurs in uh, newborns, it um, can do great harm to a physical and mental screened for by every state in the United States for the last several decades to identify these people and to put them on thyroid hormone immediately to, to avoid some of these, these terrible consequences. Um, two, two elements made of our paper. Number one was dose. Um, again, no, no such thing as a perfect dose. But we used uh, EPA data on what we call gross data all radioactive elements that fit data, uh, that uh, particles, including uh, radioactive iodine, which is said very which attacks the thyroid hormones. And we also used whatever the EPA data came up with on iodine 131. This was very poor. They only had something like 77 uh, readings of I131 in precipitation until they, two months later, they said, Accelerate any monitor going back to once every, every six months. It's just a uh, terrible, terrible for, um, decision on that part. Um, we know hypothyroidism is something that's sensitive to radiation, to iodine. We've seen it before, we've documented it in our paper, uh, experiments on rats years ago, um, people in the South Pacific exposed to atomic bomb fallouts. Living down in the Three Mile Island, and people uh, from and, and, and the Chernobyl accidents all show the increase of uh, those rates of hypothyroidism. And we also know that the fetus of the newborn are far, far more sensitive than adults to a particular dose of radiation. So, so this, not to mention the fact that we didn't have much data to choose from at this, at this early date, um, we feel the hypothyroidism is. Um, fortunately, I had called up all 50 states uh, in the screening programs. we for the day when this country has three states instead of 50. Um, 41 states responded. Um, we, we found that the five states on the west coast of the Pacific, California, Oregon, Washington, Alaska, and Hawaii, tended to have the highest levels of not just gross data that we found, but other uh, researchers have found high levels in soil and, and air as well. So we compared the changes, the 20 to 10, 2011 changes, uh, in the case of the newborn hypothyroid. These five states versus the rest of the country, the other 36 states for which we adapt, um, we found the following. We found that in the first 15 weeks, 
after the fallout from Japan arrived in the United States, the number of newborn thyroid, hypothyroid cases increased 20% on the West Coast. For the rest of the year, the last nine months, increased 16.5%. Uh, this is compared to the rest of the country in which we saw a 3% decline. Uh, the differences are statistically significant, although we do point out in the article these are a huge number of cases. In, in a single year in the United States, something like 2,000, 2,200 or so uh, more hypothyroid cases are, are detected. Now, um, the, I'm going to get back to you know, what, why this is important. Um, this, this study is, is certainly not an ending to the, to the research at Fukushima. It is very much a beginning. It is a very basic study, all right? But we make it very clear that not only are there limits to this study, which any good um, author will do, but there are things we should be doing uh, in the future. More studies on uh, thyroid uh, conditions such as hypothyroidism and more studies of um, other conditions uh, in the infants, uh, stillbirths, infant deaths, perinatal deaths, um, uh, birth defects, uh, infant cancer in, in infants, um, low-weight births and premature births among them. These 2011 data haven't been published yet in the U.S., but within the next few months they will. And again, we need, we need to use these in our studies. We need to publish them. We need to do it promptly. And, as I said, we need to bring it to the public. And this is just the United States, by the way. I mean, the, the, the same sort of thing should be going on in Japan, and we're looking into ways to work with Japanese researchers to, to do this kind of work. You know, it's very, very easy to forget what we're, we're, we're studying. I, I find this uh, every so often I have to remind myself of this. Um, I, get, I get very caught up in my pencils and my calculators and, and my, my papers and, and so on. We're talking about human beings here. We're talking about um, you know, feet, the vulnerable fetuses in, in pregnant women. We're talking about infants and young children and elderly people who are, whose immune diseases are failing, people with immune and people in general. And these people have a part. In Japan, and near Fukushima especially, but in other countries as well. They have absorbed these poisons. We need to, to, to remember that. Because, especially if we're seeing hints that low dose radiation in the United States here may, may have harmed it, we uh, are looking at the possibility of all 104 reactors in this country having the ability to do the same thing uh, in there, um, not just with meltdowns, but with routine emissions. We've seen this happen before, and uh, Steve mentioned this uh, on Three Mile Island. Um, no, after, within 12 years after the accident, there were no medical journal articles that were published on <coughs> cancer before and after the accidents. Okay, it wasn't until 12 years after, and by that time, 31 articles had been published in you know, some journals like Psychosomatic Medicine and, and Trauma and Stress. 31 of them, all dealing with Three Mile Island, all discussing the stress issues. Um, the silence was deafening. Finally, a group from Columbia University put out a study. They found that near Three Mile, within the first five years, the cancer, number of cancer cases went up 64% that radiation was not linked to it. It was not linked to this increase in any suggested stress. And that <coughs> years later, Steve Wing and his colleagues in North Carolina put out a, uh, a, a wonderful paper uh, showing just the opposite. Um, but by then, it was 18 years after the accident. And the mantra, nobody 
died at three mile island. Nobody died at three mile island. Nobody died at three mile island. Nobody died at three mile island. Was hurt again. And it is still hurt today. Body like this one apart. Same thing happened with Chernobyl. Um, soon afterwards, when they drove, and the, the firefighters got rid of the fire and covered the damaged reactor, uh, 31 um, liquidators absorbed high doses of radiation and died very quickly. Boy, if I didn't die for every time I heard the word, the number 31. Only 31 people died in Chernobyl. Only 31 people died in Chernobyl. This is why you know, mass suffering was, was being reported um, in Ukraine and in Belarus and Russia and, and elsewhere. And it wasn't until 2009 when this, this terrific book by Alexei Yablokov, who's one of our speakers here, was put out. His estimate, based on 5,000 Reports was 985,000 deaths worldwide. That was nine years ago. You just told me uh, at the break that the number has grown ever since. So that is my um, uh, my final final word to you. We need to be vigorous as a research community in getting these studies done, with using whatever data possible and getting it to the public. Otherwise, as Sandy has said. Thank you very much.